Hello everyone, I greet in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Finity and Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to and this one says that who do the Muslim really worship? Who do they worship? Okay, I believe that this is going to be a very interesting video learning about what they believe in. So if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out so guys before we get on to the video I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion this is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from this so guys without any further ado let's get on to this video and check this out who do the Muslim believe in Hi everyone and welcome back to For All Humans. From a Western understanding, it seems Islam has always been shrouded in mystery. There is so much misinformation and way too much attention is given to the controversial topics surrounding its religion. But does this mysterious faith really preach viciousness and hate? And does it promote the worship of Satan as some people think? Is it as evil as we are led to believe? Well, for Muslims, the religion is a lot tamer than all that, I'm afraid. For Muslims, Islam is not just a religion that is practiced on Fridays only to be put away during work and school hours. It does not only concern itself with moral ethics and the way to perform worship, but also includes manners and behaviors, social relationships and interactions, romance and children, even business transactions and politics. To a practicing Muslim, Islam is not confined to holy places, but is woven into the fabric of everyday choices and activities. So pretty much everyday life. When Prophet Muhammad was introducing Islam to his people, only one concept was addressed for 13 of the 23 years of his prophet. No, it wasn't women's veils or men's beards. It wasn't even prayers or what is or isn't allowed in Islam. It was the concept of God and monotheism. Islam is built on believing in the oneness of God as the first of the prescribed six articles of faith and the first of the five pillars of the religion, which we'll get into later. It is the testimony of a Muslim that he or she believes that none other is worthy of worship except God. In fact, Muslim is Arabic for a person who submits to God, which also means someone who adheres to the religion of Islam, Islam being the Arabic word for submission to God's will. Although monotheism is not unique since both Christianity and Judaism also practice it and are monotheistic religion, Islam's monotheism is detailed and precise. There are innumerable books dedicated to just this topic of the oneness of God, or Tawheed as it is called. It's a concept that specifies that God is one and unique, without any rivals, associates, partners or peers in his essence and attributes. It means believing in Allah alone as God and Lord, and attributing to him alone all the characteristics of lordship and divinity. This is much different than Judaism that says the Jewish people are to worship one God, not because he is the one and only deity, but because he is a jealous God. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. And Islam's monotheism does not allow for a God to have a son like in Christianity. The God of Islam doesn't share physical attributes with any of his creations, including us mortal beings. While we may have offspring, Islam's God does not. The Quran says, He God begets not nor is he begotten. Remember, he is unique and therefore doesn't share his divinity with anyone or anything else. With that being said, however, Islam does refer to the same God as that of the Jews and the Christians. It is the last of the three Abrahamic religions and it shares the same basic message. Confused? Well, let me try to explain. While the three religions may differ in their nuanced messages, the basic understanding of worshiping God is essentially the same. Belief of one God and the prophets who came to share that message are the same. Calls for love and peace in all three religions are the same. Prayers to a higher power who makes plans for us, that's the same. It's believed by Muslims, however, that it's the same God, the same message, just that the message of the previous religions has been changed over time, and Islam came to correct those changes to get back to the original, true message. So let's get down to what Islam is all about. We begin with the core of Islamic beliefs. As mentioned before, Islam has six articles of faith that sum up the foundation of the Islamic belief system that is shared by more than 1.8 billion people worldwide. They are number 1. Belief in one God The biggest sin in Islam is worship to other than God. And since worship in Islam is not only in the sense of spiritual activity, but is part of everyday life for a Muslim, worshipping someone or something other than God can mean dedicating your life, your choices and your actions to something or someone other than God. 
Number two, belief in angels who are unseen beings who surround us and are obedient to God. Number three, belief in prophets who communicated with God. These prophets start with Adam and include Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Peace be upon all of them. Number four, belief in the books of God. Muslims believe that God revealed his instructions through books to some of the prophets like the Psalms, Torah, and the Gospel. But over time, the original teachings of these books got distorted or lost. Muslims believe the Quran is God's final revelation given to Prophet Muhammad and that it has been fully preserved. Number five, believe in the day of judgment. It's a day when the life of this world and everything in it will come to an end and every person will be raised from the dead to be judged individually according to his faith and actions. Number six, belief in destiny and divine decree. Muslims believe that since God is the sustainer of all life, nothing happens except by his will and with his full knowledge. This belief does not contradict the idea of free will. God does not force us. Our choices are known to God beforehand because his knowledge is complete. The six articles of faith essentially summarize the core beliefs. There are also five core formal religious rituals of worship, commonly known as the pillars of Islam. Number one, the Shahada, or declaration of faith that there is only one God and that Muhammad is his messenger. This declaration is not a mere statement just to be uttered, but it must be shown in one's actions as well. Number two, the five daily prayers. Muslims pray five times a day during the day directly to God without anyone to intervene on their behalf. Through their prayers, Muslims can connect straight to God and find spiritual strength, peace of mind, and a break from the daily grind during their allotted prayer times spread out throughout the day. Number three, paying zakat, a type of charity reserved for the poor and needy. Forget taxes, this type of charity is how Muslims take care of the people who are really in need, and it's the responsibility of every Muslim to pay yearly. Number four, fasting for the month of Ramadan. For one month every year, Muslims are commanded to fast from pre-dawn to dusk, to practice self-control, to focus on prayers and devotion, and to sympathize with those who have little or nothing to eat and who are in need. Number five, forming Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca. Every abled Muslim is required to perform this spiritual journey at least once in their lifetime. It is the great equalizer where everyone wears the same things, is treated in the same manner, and has to go through the same experiences. Islam also relies heavily on the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad through his sayings and his actions. Some of his core philosophies include The actions of believers are judged by the intentions behind them. A good Muslim leaves what doesn't concern him and only looks for the best in others. A person can't be a true believer unless he loves for his brother or sister in humanity what he loves for himself. This is known as the golden rule and is found in other religions as well. One shouldn't harm himself or others. Everyone should be treated equally. No one is better than anyone else owing to their ethnicity, gender, or status. And finally, life is about gaining God's love by serving Him and by helping others, not by amassing wealth or striving for worldly gain. Essentially, to summarize, Prophet Muhammad stated, I have only been sent to perfect moral character. And lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Sharia law, which has truly been at the center of much controversy and debate in recent times. Sharia law is Islamic law, and its sole purpose is to preserve five things religion, life, family, intellect, and wealth. Some contemporary scholars also add that Sharia law is meant to preserve justice or liberty as well. These are essential to human welfare and therefore must be protected by law at all times. So now that we know the core of Islam, is there a place for this religion in the world we live in today? Is Islam relevant in the 21st century in the same manner it was in the 7th century? Well, for all humans, says yes. How? Well, let's see. In talking about equity and justice, Islam provides every individual with some basic socio-economic rights, such as the right to access factors of production, land, labor, and capital, so economic justice, the right to be heard and redress of grievances, legal justice, and the right to safety, education, satisfaction of basic needs, access to public property, etc., which is social justice. It is incumbent upon the rulers of the time to ensure that socio-economic rights of individuals are respected and fulfilled. As is stated in the Quran, O you who believe, eat not up your property amongst yourselves unjustly, except it be as trade amongst you by mutual consent. The ayah specifies that any form of trade should be conducted upon mutual agreement. Thus, if Islam was the way of the world, some CEOs would not be able to build their companies on the backs of underpaid employees for a grueling labor that doesn't allow them the time for bathroom breaks. There would be more equality and fairness built into some company's business structure. Islam prohibits the use of interest in all of its forms as it amounts to exploitation of the weak and allows wealth to accumulate in the hands of a few, thereby increasing the gap between the rich and the poor. 
These are just two examples of how Islam is still relevant in today's world, but there are more ways that Islam is still applicable to us. In women's rights issues, in environmental issues, in issues of war and security, in science and technology, and in so many other contemporary issues. So it might be worth looking at what Islam has to say when trying to formulate solutions to today's problems. Well, that's a very interesting um, video. I think this lady was able to summarize um, Islam in 10 minutes and able to like teach a lot of things in essence about the religion, about its um, fundamentals, and then some of the things in essence it stand for. And then when you look at in essence, Islam in a sense sometimes, and then also Judaism, and then you begin to ask yourself in a sense so many questions because when you look at it, of course, both of them both believe you understand in that oneness of god they both don't believe in jesus as god or god manifesting in human flesh but then in judaism they see jesus as just another rabbi but in islam they look at him you understand as just a prophet okay a prophet and messenger of god and not him being the son of god it is only christianity that kind of talks about that god manifestation of him and then therefore then christianity then jesus resurrection from dead now serve as the foundation of um christianity else otherwise any other thing in a sentence to seem similar when it comes to love for neighbor and how you should conduct yourself as a believer when you look at in a sense as of that once in a sense they tend to go hand in hand and then kind of go the same um very direction but then nevertheless one thing that all these religions are talking about is worshiping of oneness of god and as i've always said in my videos that christians don't believe that there is three god or neither do they worship three god but then therefore they worship one god but they only say that god manifests in human flesh that comes about the jesus christ and not that they are saying that god they are worshiping what three god that jesus is another god the holy spirit another god and then the god the father another god no they are saying that god the father manifests in human flesh you understand and that is the jesus christ and then he did that in a sense for the atonement of mankind for man you understand to understand that he has sinned and then therefore to reconcile him back to himself that's just you understand the difference and then any other thing you understand is the same thing and jesus didn't just go about and just keep saying that he is the son of god he is the son of god no that's not just the whole thing it's just for you to preach and understand about god it's just for you to understand that look there is someone who created you and there is a need for you to worship that very person and then he called your attention to that very person who created you right and then all he's trying to do is to reconcile you so that you don't have to perish right and then therefore call you into that person that's just what in a sense his message is just basically all about and nothing about him coming to tell you that he is god or something no that's not just the whole thing it's for you to understand that there is someone and that person is god and we are saying he manifests himself we could look at in a son moses for instance on the mountain when he was in the mountain god manifests itself so how do you prove that this is just the same thing that we are talking about to moses of course it manifests in a sense as a burning fire a little to the point that moses was even asking that he want to see but then the bible makes us to understand even the Quran that he was not be able to to see him why because of the brightness of the light he was not be able to want to see him so how do you talk about that very manifestation so that's why i'm saying that god has his own way in a sense on how he wants to communicate with um human and not necessarily that it has to be based on how our logic or how we can think i think one brother sent me a message that's on um on uh, as a comment of course he said that the scriptures muslim believe the torah which is given to moses the psalms given to david and then the quran given to muhammad and he says the bible that's the new testament the luke Matthew, John, Thomas, William, Toby, where is Jesus? So basically, friends of Jesus have scriptures of Jesus. So where is the book of Jesus? And then this comment was made by the loyal black SG. <laughs> As of this time that I'm reacting to this video was done. That was um, 23 um, 
minute ago all right so all that i'm trying to say is that of course we muslim believe that of course they believe in the torah that's the message given to the moses and then also the zabur given to david and then therefore the angel that is the gospel so i don't understand where these very muslim come from you see these are the, some of the reasons why i used to say is that there is a need for us to study the scripture either you are studying it either to become you know a muslim or to become a christianity that's not it but it's better for you to know and understand what those people you understand are serving that's why the fact that he posted as a muslim but then forgotten that of course the gospel or the angel is actually in the quran so i do not know for him though but then all the same that's why i point out understand him for an instance for some of you to understand how people think about um, christianity of course it's very interesting one because when you look at one of the most important thing that normally attract people to islam is that that very first thing they do should i say the second thing in the should i say the fundamentals of the islam that's aside from believing in the oneness of god and then recognize him as your maker that's while taking shahada the second one is the five daily prayers that very prayers is one of the reasons that is actually attracting people to the religion and then during the ramadan as they go about about giving to the charity which form one of the fundamentals of course it makes a lot of people to feel like yeah look this is actually a religion and therefore the way they do not like to show this um shall i say segregation or something bringing differences and say you are black you are white and all those things as far as you are a muslim there is this level of togetherness in a sense between the muslims so some of those are some of the things that they do that makes it very attractive a very interesting video and i believe that some of us have learned who the muslim worship and then the muslim they actually worship the almighty god so this is the end of my video if you like my reaction you should like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it in the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed and i see you in my next video bye bye